this picture here doesn't sufficiently and properly do justice to the master I'm going to be talking about. Master Lin Chi. Now this translation came from uh, uh, Burton Watson. I've had this book for quite a while now, a number of years. The Zen teaching of Master Lin Chi. Now, uh, I have this here. The Zen. I like Zen. The reason why I like Zen is because Zen. Zen cuts you all the bullshit. Zen will not allow you to lie to yourself and live in a state of denial. Zen forces you to face yourself and face the truth. And you can't fool a, a Zen master. You can fool a lot of other masters. You can't fool a Zen master. Now, this the Zen system came from... Uh, the Zen system came from India. It was brought to China by a famous monk who was a Dravidian named Buddha Dharma. He was a prince. And uh, he went to China to teach Buddhism. But he didn't take hold of hold in China because of the uh, emperor. The emperor was asking him stupid questions. Um, and Buddha, Buddha got irritated somewhat. And he's like, he's like, fuck this place. I'm going to bounce, you know. So, you know, he went to Shaolin. He didn't want to let the brother in the temple. You know how it is. Buddha Dhamma, a prince coming from India. Oh, by the way, Dhamma means great block. You figure the rest out on your own, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's why they call him great block. Came from a Dravidian race, warrior class, which makes it makes a lot of sense that the, his system of meditation, uh, of Zen Buddhism, would take hold more in Japan than it did in China. He was a no, no bullshit guy. You know, after coming from after walking from, you know, after after walking from 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 India to China, walking across the Himalaya, all the hardship he has to go through, and now he get to mainland China, and the emperor asking him all this dumbass question. It's like, man, I've just been through some hardship. It's been like six. I've been like on the road for six months. You gonna ask me all these questions? Motherfucker. And Dama was like, man, look, you know, why don't you just figure it out for yourself? You know what I mean? You know, I need to hear that no bullshit right now. All this stuff in your head is just in your head. The, the, the Zen system of reflection, self self examination, the philosophy behind it was to be able to face the truth. And that's why it took place in Japan, because it was very clear, concise, if you notice Japanese people, straight to the point, even their language. So a warrior system. So only a warrior really can face himself. I learned a few Japanese when people mess with me. I speak Japanese. Motherfucker! Yeah, I speak a Zen style of Japanese. So Master Lynchy here was a famous Zen master. And um, what makes him so unique was because a Zen master is not like a, uh, it's not a religious master. A Zen master is a meditative master. A Zen master is, is one who can see through your shit. And the reason why he can see through your shit is because he's beyond the mind. And you can only use the mind to trick him, right? A Zen master can see you coming from a mile away. He can hear those scrap metal clinging, 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 clinging. He is beyond religion. He's beyond philosophies, dogmas. A Zen master isn't here to tell you what you want to hear. He knows the truth. Because the truth comes from him actually facing himself for years and years and years of meditation, discipline, hardship, and sacrifice. That's why I became a master. Um, so Lin Chi was a great master because he was able to cut you all the bullshit and tell people the truth. 
That's the job of a master. But here, I'm going to read from a text. Now this, I find this very interesting. Page 16. And a couple of things struck me about this was, which, which was so simple and yet so divine. And rather than rumbling on, let me read it. The master ascended the hall. That's how they... That's how the verse start. The master ascended ascended the hall. So he ascended the hall. He's he didn't go to the hall. It's not like he's he's not like some preacher that going to the pulpit to, to talk. He ascended the hall. So what that tells me what that tells me he's been to that place several times. He was not just a, a master anymore. He had ascended the very place that he was. He was beyond all this stuff. He was beyond the teaching. He was beyond all the dogma, all the trappings of Zen, and all the protocol. He was he had ascended all of that. He was the master ascended the hall, just like Jesus ascended the cross. When he was on the cross, he said, "Forgive them; they know not what they do." So he ascended. He said, "Today you'll be with me in paradise." Because you're able to withstand the pain of these nails going through your arm. You know. So he ascended the hall. So he wasn't concerned with what he was thinking, what he was saying. He said what came to his mind. He said the truth all the time. He was about telling you the truth. Some people can't handle it. Nowadays, people can't. Yeah, nowadays, in these days of political correctness, I'm kind of... I really don't know how Mussolini would do, because he, uh, with all these people around, you know, they come to your channel. They want you to say, say it this way, say it that way. We don't want you to say it this way, cause it's gonna hurt our feeling. Fuck you. Go somewhere else. You know what I mean? And that's what the Zen master was, was saying. Oh, fuck you. I'm up here. I'm up. I said this stuff. You are burning to me. You know, you're not going to tell me how to say it, what to say. Truth is very dear to me and you can't buy me. So I've ascended all the shit, all your dogma and all your religion, all your rules, regulation. I've, I've ascended your little political correctness. The master ascended the hall. I love this shit. The master ascended the hall. He wasn't like a preacher, you 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 sell out preachers who who who's who's on this pulpit preaching his feel-good message, prosperity message. He wasn't about that. He had ascended all of that. And he didn't give a fuck who came to his congregation. Matter of fact, get the fuck out if you don't like what I have to say. Master ascended the hall. He was beyond all this shit. He was beyond life. He, w he was beyond life, his very self. He had ascended the hall. He wasn't just there, he was above it. The master ascended the hall. And a monk asked, What is meant by this mutter of the sword blade? The monk, uh, the monk asked Linchi, What is mutter? What is meant by this matter of the sword blade? Enlighten us, master. Talk to us, dog. And Li Chi responded. And that's what Lin Chi said. This is what Lin Chi said. Fearful. Fearful. If you look at look at if you look at the blade, the, the Japanese samurai blade, sword, it's one of the most fearsome weapon ever forged. It can cut you, steel, anything. It is durable. It cuts you steel. It cuts you anything you put in front of it. It cuts you metal. It is a ferocious weapon that is hardened based on how it was forged. You know, one of the tradition, one of the rituals that the monks used to use to, to, to tell them after sharpening the weapon, what they would do, they would put it into a spring, put the blade in a spring, and have the 
the water flow over it. And you know as the water flow over it, leaves would, would pass over it too. But when the leaves pass over it, when the leaves come in contact with the blade, with the edge of the blade, they would get sheared in half. And that's how you know how formidable and sharp this weapon was. Just from gravity. That's how sharp this weapon was. That's how durable it was. They used to take it into battle. And you know, when they fail in battle, they would use it to commit higher carry. Take themselves out. In other words, this, the sword had a spirit to it. That's what this blade was. This was the blade of truth. So what is meant? What is meant? What is the matter of the sword blade? The sword, as we know, is truth. So, and Lynch is saying, fearful, fearful, because you really don't want to hear what I have to say, guy. Because truth is a two-edged sword. And once I tell you, it's a great responsibility. So it's like he's saying, hey, beware, beware, beware. Go slow, go slow, go slow. Fearful, fearful, fearful. You don't want to know, you don't want to know. Once you know the truth, it doesn't set you free. It can make you, it can bound you up and it can, it can tire you out. Because now you have to change the way you do things. You can't unknow. You can lie to yourself and tell yourself you don't know. But, you know, you know what you know. Because wherever you go, there you are. So you can't lie to yourself. He said, beware, beware, fearful, fearful. He said, you, you step in. <laughs> hey, man, you, you, you're treading on delicate ground here. So you better behave. You better watch what you're saying. You really don't want me to answer the question, because if I answer the question, you're going to be in trouble. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. So fearful, fearful. Beware, beware, behave, behave. Know the truth, and the truth will make you free sometimes. And sometimes it will be like a rope around your neck. And I don't think you can handle it. So he said, you know, just watch what you're saying now. Hold it, dude. Hold it, man. That's what Lin Chi was saying to this guy. Hold it. Be careful, be careful. <laughs> That's why it's a fearful, fearful could mean be careful, be careful. You can switch those words because the truth is very hard. And it's not so easy as you think it is because once I tell you the meaning, you might not be able to deal with it. How many people know, you know right now who live a life of live and false, make-believe life? Look at the people around you. They can't even deal with the truth. People come to your channel, they're talking about, hey, we, won't, we don't want you to say it this way. We want you to say it this way. No, who the fuck are you to come to tell me to say what I need to say? Huh? I'm simply speaking my truth. You want to say it, you say it the way you want to say it. I say it how I want to say it. If you don't like it, get the fuck off my channel. Well, you will hurt your brand. The advertisers will shun your channel. Them cocksuckers. And there's some little 12 year old kid they need to go bomb to make a profit. Politically correct environment that we live in. You can't even speak the truth anymore. Lynchy, Lynchy, Master Lynchy didn't care about that. Master Lynchy didn't give a damn. That's why he was a master. A lot of your artists nowadays, a lot of your preachers are just saying things just so your audience will be amused, will be entertained. You know the truth, but you can't say the truth because you want to stuff your pockets, you bunch of spiritual traitors. Look, that's why Zen was so good because it's the purest form, it's a very pure form of meditation. Such a pure form of meditation. He teach you how to be the true warrior. How not to lie to yourself, but to be truthful to yourself. It's so truthful and honest in its own system of self-reflection 
that it said, if you are in deep meditation and you see the Buddha on the path, if you meet the Buddha on the path, kill him. Because that Buddha on the path, that very person might hinder you from seeing the true light, to see the true self, to see truth in its purest form. So you get rid of that Buddha. Hence, you want to kill that God. Who is your God? Is that money, sex, fame? Who controls you? Who compromise your state of being? Who compromise your vision so you can't see the light that flows from within? Can you turn your light around? Can you kill those gods that prevent you from seeing the true self? Can you subjugate them beneath your feet? Zen force you to face yourself and not light yourself. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. The monk was about to speak, whereupon the master struck him. Yeah, that's what I like about Zen. Say, hey, the monk was about to speak. A lot of time, people just like to talk. They hear themselves talk. The master says, hey, 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 I just tell you something profound, and you can't even, you can't even meditate on it. You can't even reflect on it. You just want to jump to the next subject matter. Shut the hell up and listen to what I have to say to you. Stop being so goddamn wordy. Sometimes, people just have a question for a question. They don't give a fuck about the answer. And that's why Zen Master wouldn't deal with that. They say, if you just want to come here, come to my audience and have an audience with me and ask me questions, and I give you the answer, what more do you need to know? Just shut the fuck up. So the Master slap him. That's, that's why I like the Zen Master, because your body slam the shit out of you if, you if you don't shut the fuck up. Go meditate, go practice. Don't come here and ask me a dumb question. The Master ascended the hall. Guy want to know what the meaning of the sword blade. And the Zen, Li Chi, Zen, the Li Chi master said, look, man, you need to be careful. He asked me a question like that. He said, fearful, fearful. That was his response. And the monk was about to speak again, whereupon Master Li Chi hit him, struck him, smack him. They'll be known for smacking the students, slapping you, the shit out of you, body slamming you, kicking your ass. Nowadays you say something slightly. Oh, that's verbal abuse. Fuck out of here. You're so weak you can't even listen to the truth. Someone can't even express himself. You got all these uh, rotunda, sideways, neandering statements that you all want to come at us with. Fuck you. Someone asked. How about the lay disciple, Shishi, who worked the pistol but forgot he was moving his feet? Where has he gotten to? So this motherfucker worked the pistol. He was working. He was toiling. And he forgot that he even have his feet. He had reached a whole different level where he had just transcended himself. He worked the pistol. If you don't know what a pistol is, well, go Google it. The master said, drown in a deep spring. <laughs> drown in a deep spring. He, he had, so he had, you know what a spring is? A spring is the cleanest, clearest form of water there is. Because it's always moving. It's always cleaning itself. It has reached a high level of clarity. And he said, where has he gotten to? That's what he said, moving his feet. Where has he gotten to? Now the trick question was, where has he gotten to? You get it now? So, how about lay disciple she, she, who worked the pistol? But forgot he was moving his feet. Where has he gotten to? And the master said, Drown in a deep spring. He had reached a level of clarity, he just engulfed him. 
Yeah? It, it engulfed him and it disappeared into the big empty. He had gone beyond the mind, beyond the self. He had reached the big country, the big empty. He was just total energy. That's what spring is. A deep spring is nothing but total, pure energy. And he was drowning in it. He not only drowned in this spring, but he became this spring. He became the energy. Where has the Saprashishi went? Where has he gotten to? He drowned in a deep spring. There's power in the moment where truth have its hidden roots. Not limited by mind, thoughts, or reasoning, the heart knows of a place where no sadness can enter. Would it not have been that your eyes were so blind you would see a river overflowing with nectar right from your 10,000 petals lotus center? Unroll about now, you too could be breathing in the fresh air of spring like a young cicada licking the early morning dewdrops from wild orchid leaves. Right about now, that's my poem for Master Lynchy. <laughs>